Welcome friends to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and today I'm speaking with Zach and Jody Gray, Nashville-based wedding photographers and friends of mine, uh, and they're incredible photographers for sure, but they're also made a name for themselves as teachers. So we're gonna jump right into it because, uh, well, first of all, welcome guys. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. thanks, thanks. I know. I know it's early in the morning, uh, <laughs> but we, we made this happen. Thanks for coming up and, and meeting with me here on Skype. Uh, the the reason I guess we wanted to sit down and chat really was because uh, you're you're about to launch a, a, a webinar for Shoot Dot Edit, and it's it's called the Three Simple Steps to Using Off Camera Flash. You guys rock flash. You guys rock natural light. You guys. I'm telling you. Uh, Thanks to you, and I bought your DVDs, by the way, uh, uh. downloads, I did, uh, where you guys talk about how to use a reflector. Oh, my God. That has made me bundles of money. Nice. Uh, I'm not kidding. It's amazing. It is. It is. It is such a simple little tool, but yeah. I carry it around everywhere I go, you know, everywhere awesome. I go. So yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how just adding that one little extra bit of light in the eyes up allows you to not do it in post-production. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So guys, uh, let's let's jump right in because I know uh, my audience is is eager to know about who you guys are. You guys started out uh, uh, as wedding photographers. You are wedding photographers based in Nashville, and you know you are busy people. You know you are mm -hmm. you made you've made a, a, a business out of this. Uh, you are able to make it happen. Now you have a baby as well, right, yes, Jack? Yes, ja How old is Jackson now, anyway? He is 14 months old. As of yesterday, which is yeah. crazy. Wow. He's growing like a little weed. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now, as a father myself, I know we're all juggling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the things you guys teach, and I've heard you say it many, many times, including on Creative Live, is outsource, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you guys are like big proponents of outsourcing. And, yeah. you know, initially as a photographer, we're all nervous about like, oh, wait a minute, can we afford it? Can we do it? Can we not do it? That kind of thing. So mm -hmm. what would your advice be for somebody who is just starting out and who, who's, who's busy, yeah? yeah, but who's not able to make that decision? Let's go with outsourcing, whether it's shoot.edit or whatever, it can, whatever is out there where they can actually hand off their work to somebody else to complete, yeah? And yeah. So what would, you, what would your advice be? Uh we may both have some advice on that. <clears throat> I would say my first advice would be, you know, obviously when you start a business, the, there's a couple of stages you go through. One is the not having a lot of clients and money is tight. And then right. you get a lot of clients and it's kind of chaotic because you're not sure how to handle all those clients. Right. But I think the most important thing to do in the beginning is one, just have a good system built. Because um, if you have a good system built and things are streamlined and you find the bottlenecks, the areas that are giving you a lot of trouble and taking a lot of time, mm -hmm. then as more clients start to come your way, you can sort of service and handle those clients and then you'll have money sitting in your bank account and realize that, you know, it's, <clears throat> and Jody will probably say this too, but it's very hard to let go as photographers. But this, the way that most photographers run their businesses today is not the way any business should be run ever if you want it to grow and succeed. You have to be able to hand off the things that you don't have to specifically do so that you can focus on clients and making money and building relationships, the things that only you can do, right. and then you can actually grow your business. Yeah. I think that when, you, when you're finding yourself in a place where a business is really starting to ramp up, it's really starting going in, you're slowly starting to find that you don't have the time to do everything that you need to do, and things are starting to fall in the cracks, when you start to get to that point, I would advise to do it like right even before you get to that point, but a lot of us still don't want to because we can't justify the cost. So if you're starting to feel that, that needs to be a great indicator that you need to start giving things up and outsourcing them, and you'd be amazed at how much faster you can grow your business and how more efficient you'll be because you now have all this time to focus on the things that are really important, like client relationships and making sure you're staying on top of them and not letting all that go to the wayside. It's interesting, too, if you look at like some of the top commercial photographers as a an example in the world they don't do all that stuff they don't even do their own lighting like they are just the creator they tell people what they need them to do for them they don't edit their photos they don't do all the compositing work they have other people doing that stuff and we need to be in the same mindset of 
what do I want to be great at? Because you can't be great at everything. You can be a great editor, or do you want to be a great photographer? Which one do you want to be? You know, I want to be a great photographer. So I focus my my artistic creativity, my energy on my photography skills, my lighting skills, my composition skills, and then learn how to hand off that editing side of it because it's not something I want to be great at. If you want to be a great editor and that's your focus, cool, then you probably want to get a job as an editor, not necessarily as a photographer. Right. One of the things I do, uh, and I'm, and as you probably can imagine, uh, most photographers are probably very bad at numbers, right? So, <laughs> right? so uh, maybe if, with some exceptions, you guys. Um, <laughs> and one of the things I do is I, I outsource my bookkeeping. Yep. It's a simple mm. thing. It's Yes, it's, there's a monthly cost to it, but you know what? Yeah. It. I don't want to handle it. I don't want to handle it. I want to have somebody else handle it who's really good at handling those kinds yeah. of things. And yeah. uh, that makes complete and perfect sense. Uh, you guys have been sort of hammering that uh, that that uh, that theme, uh, that, uh, that that mantra from, from day one, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, how did you get to that point? Were you, were you at, a, at, a, at a loss for like you know, time or were you just sort of struggling at point at some point and you said oh my god i wish i had somebody else to take care of this stuff or is it just something that came to you go oh just makes sense just outsource it right i think it and the thing like for us like zach does all of our post-production like when we shot weddings he would do it all and he can do it really fast he can turn a wedding around in two to three hours but even then two to three hours what can zach be doing right. instead and that's where it came to that you know like i'd come upstairs and you know his whole morning was spent editing and i'm like we have to do this we have to do this we have to do this and if he had those three hours free he could have done that and so even though we could do it so fast we still knew that his time could be better spent doing something else and so that was the pivoting point for us to outsource our editing yeah and i i think too and <clears throat> it happened in that in that the place that we talk about that pain point which mm -hmm. is the business in the beginning when we first started shooting was kind of half busy and then we really worked on the business side of it and the business took off to early 2008 all of a sudden we had 33 weddings booked and 33 engagement sessions and 33 of everything that we were doing and the number just kept climbing and that's when we started taking a critical look at the systems the process what were we doing what could we hand off what could we stop doing what didn't really matter anymore and trying to move that stuff off of our plate. But like Jody said, I think it's important to do it prior to that and have it ready to go so that when things do get busy, you're not scrambling, you're not running around you know, with the chicken with their head cut off trying to figure out what am I gonna do right now. And then the worst thing that happens, I think too, is <clears throat> you get into that pain point, things do get busy, and you don't, as an example, say you're it takes you 20 hours to edit a wedding, which is normal. Like a lot of photographers spending 10, 15, 20 hours. Wow. That's like half of a work week, you know, on just editing one wedding. <clears throat> so say you don't start outsourcing that, and then what happens is your clients start not getting their stuff turned around, and then all this momentum you've been building for the last year or however long you've been spending starts getting wasted because clients are unhappy, and that can really be detrimental to the business. Absolutely. Well, wow. this is solid advice, absolutely, for anybody who's listening. You don't have to be a wedding photographer, really, to listen to this and take it in, right? I mean, you could be a, a busy portrait photographer, and, and you go, wow, I wish I could just go and develop my business uh, by networking or whatever in the time that, that I've been spending, you know, tweaking with Photoshop or whatever, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, wow. Uh, you guys are... Are, are teachers. You're speakers nationally. You're known nationally. You travel. Uh, at least you used to travel around and do workshops, <laughs> right? And yeah. mo now most of your workshops now are in Nashville, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that got you into teaching? It started, it actually started off as a systems problem again, because so many people <laughs> were emailing us asking how we got the look of our images that we did okay. and Zach just being I mean he loves sharing I mean we both love sharing and helping but like he would get all the emails in his inbox and so he would be spending I kid you not hours responding to each <laughs> person answering all these questions I was like okay baby this has got to stop like it's great to help others but not at the sake of ourselves so we were like what if we can do this all in one and do this in workshops and so we did our first workshop with another fantastic photographer Evan Baines and ever since then we've just done our own workshops. Yeah, so so it, that's started, how started. Yeah, it started with workshops and then the stuff that 
didn't seem like it needed an entire workshop. It was just a question we kept getting asked. Mm -hmm. We were like, well, let's create a content resource for that. And we started ZachAndJody.com, uh, our blog, which is now just ZachAndJody.com. And you can find all of our stuff on, in one place. It's we a just, beautiful website, by the way. Yeah, we just relaunched Thanks. it from Melissa, uh, Melissa Love. Love. She's, great She's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we've now spent almost five years, I guess, posting uh, content for photographers. We have over a thousand blog posts for photographers. Um, and that just be became a way for me to go, hey, you know what? That's a great question. I already answered it. You can go find it right. Here's a link. You know, and it saved me time. You know, I could just write it once and put some pretty pictures in there. And right. then it helped people solve those problems. Right. You guys have uh, resources for photographers uh, that include uh you know, as I've already mentioned, you know the, in the it's called in camera shooting, which which ta which taught me how to use a uh, reflector really. Um, <laughs> and you've got one uh, about lighting, which I think we're about to talk about because yeah, you, you are going to be doing this webinar where you reveal three simple lighting techniques, I guess, or lighting systems or steps uh, to photographers. Uh, why why the why the 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 pitch for just three? Why not? Five or seven. I mean, what <laughs> baby steps. That's the key. Lighting can be very complicated, and so we're starting with three because we want to break it down and keep it very simple. And yes, you can go into crazy stuff, but baby steps so people don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, and I think it's really the main keys, like the main points, is what we're going to cover. Okay. There's always going to be exceptions to everything, you know, as there is with photography and with raising kids. For those of you that have families, you know, you can read one book and it can help in a lot of ways. It's not going to help with every kid and every situation. Right. Um, but what we're going to talk about on the webinar is really going to cover the three outlining keys that if you want to start using off-camera flash but have been afraid of it or it kind of makes you feel a little anxious when you think about it or there's some mystery to it, this is going to solve those problems and talk about sort of the one, two, three steps that are going to get you working. Because the great thing about this is something that I've talked about for years, but that I love about photography and that I love about music. Music is my passion. That's what I've started doing before I got into photography. But they have similarities, and that's why I love them both, and that's that they're scientific and creative. Right. So we teach a lot of the science behind off-camera lighting, and it really is. If you do A, B, C, you get the result of D every single time. Right. Then, it, now that you have that foundation built, you can go be creative around the process, and you can add your own flair to it and make it look the way that you want. But now that you really have to start with that foundation, and that's what we're going to be talking about is the foundation. Absolutely. You guys are uh, Westcott pros, right? I mean, you are Correct. sponsored by Westcott, and mm -hmm. uh, you certainly know your way around all the Westcott products, I know that, <laughs> yeah. uh, including those reflectors, by the way, yes. <laughs> uh, which is what I, I bought Westcott reflectors right off the nice. bat. I mean, awesome. when I, after your after your your uh, DVD, uh, I mean, my God, that was amazing. I mean, really, I I, I keep saying it, it's an amazing thing, and, <laughs> and, and people going, oh, why is he pimping it so hard? It is good, guys. It is produced well. It is edited oh, well. Thanks. It is written well. I mean, it, the whole thing was just so professionally done, really. It's, it's a far cry from what's out there uh, as an alternative, I'll be honest with you. Um, Thank you. I really mean that. Um, now, uh, you are going to be doing this workshop when again? Do you remember your dates? February or January 21st right. is Jan the webinar, okay. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Excellent. It's an hour-long webinar, guys, and you can't really miss it because – uh, you know, even though it's only three simple steps, uh, I think it's going to be three very long steps, I, I'm assuming, because uh, it's a whole hour long of information that these guys are giving you guys. Uh, Zach and Jody, really, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks yeah, for having Yeah, we're glad we could be here. We it's always it. a pleasure, my friend. I and I'll tell you what, I'm going to pitch for my my contingent here in Hartford, Connecticut. You guys are welcome back anytime, but we need to connect. We need to make that happen, guys. Right. Oh, we would love to do it. We'd love to be back. We haven't been there in a while. We'd love to come back. Excellent. We'll do it. Thank you again. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye.